Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Kathy at Attic Treasures Etc. And I thought today what we would do is um, play with some inks, some distress inks and distress oxides uh, and, and sprays and see what happens. I've been watching some of Tim Holt's videos on these and I've been having a lot of fun with them. So I thought I would share with you what I've learned and some of the things that I've come up with that I've done. So this little guy, it's just a piece of watercolor paper, and I was just using it to mop up some of the um, some of the mess I was making with, you know, just as I was working with other things. And you know, it could be a uh, die cut or whatever you want to do with it. It's um, just a nice little background. And in fact, that's what all these are is is basically just backgrounds. This one is um, this. This, oh, this paper was matte photo paper. I wanted to see what kind of an effect the ink had on matte photo paper. So it's matte on both sides, so I just chose one. And and uh, these are really a lot, <laughs> a lot of fun and extremely freeing and liberating. They're just too much fun. This one is on some of this cardstock. I do not even know where I got it. It's not very thick. And it has, um, I don't know if you can see the, the pattern in it. It goes like this. It really shows up in one of the other ones that I did. But um, then I did some stamping on it. So there's some di mostly distress oxides on this. Um, and so we'll, we'll play with those a little bit. And then another one from, oh, this is, a, this is an index card. So just the back of the index card. And again, these are these are just backgrounds. So what you can do with them later is you can make tags out of them or whatever you want. Here's some of that cardstock I was saying it has like the um, the fibers in it go this way, and you can you can really see the the effect of the fibers. You can see really see it's very directional, and I think that looks really cool. So here's some things that I did with it. I made this cute little tag um, just with. I had taken some book page and just played with some of the inks and made a background and then made this little tag out of it. Oh, there you go. I went way out of frame. And this one is on that cardstock again. And I was as I was playing with it, I realized it was starting to look like a landscape. So I just sort of went with it. And then this one, um, I just made something that maybe I can use in a journal or on a journal cover or something like that. We have some embossed glaze on it too and a fussy cut and some music sheet and stamping. So I thought, why don't we just try this together and see what happens? So I thought uh, first we would use this book page. Now this is a page out of the Golden Book Encyclopedias that I've been working with altering and the paper is really interesting. It's kind of thick. It's not like cardstock thick, but when you cut it, it just has a really cool feel to it. So I thought it would be, um, since I made the tag out of it, I thought it'd be kind of fun to, to try this. So what I've learned about distress inks and oxides is that even though they come in the same colors, they have different properties. So for example, the distress inks, they're a dye and they're translucent, which means that you can see through them. Um, they're water reactive and they have a little bit of resin in them, so you can emboss directly on them. But oxides are a little bit different. They're a fusion of dye and pigment. So when you apply distress oxides onto papers and things like that, they're more opaque. Now they're still water reactive, so you can make it move and do a lot of interesting things, but these also contain a little bit of resin, so they can be embossed as well. The Distress Archival inks, they are a solvent-based medium for slick surfaces. Um, it doesn't work really well, or excuse me, I'm sorry, it's oil-based, so it'll sit on top of whatever other inks you use, and then if you get it on something, you have to use archival cleaner to clean it off, and I don't have any, so I have to be really careful. So what's nice about this is that it's permanent, it's, it's waterproof, so it's not going to react with water like the oxides and the inks do. Then we have the spray 
uh, stains and I've been having a ton of fun working with these. These are basically the inks in more liquid form. And then same with the oxides. I have a couple of these. And in fact, on this one, you can see all the this uh, darker pink on top. That is this um, oxide. So it has again, it's a fusion of pigment and dye. So it's more opaque. And you have to, you can hear that little uh, ball inside. So you have to shake it up so it it mixes it up. So I thought we would just play with these and uh, do some of the things that I've been learning about and see what happens. The nice thing is, is that when you do this, um, you can have sort of a plan, but I wouldn't get too hung up on it because it can come out really a lot differently than you think. Okay, so I've got several colors here. Um, and I, what I'll do, I'm gonna use this as my palette here. So this is the craft mat, uh, you know, the media mat portion. So I'm just going to, you know, um, squish it on there. So that's Rusty Hinge. And then this is Wild Honey. So I thought it, I would start with some, some of the darker colors. This is uh, Faded Jeans. And this is Peeled Paint. Let me make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm going to move the mat over a little bit so you can see better. Okay, so I'm using this as my palette. Now, in order to get it to move, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spritz it with water. And what you want are like little droplets. And I don't really want this big, this, you can tell I use this a lot because the center of the, the pad um, need, you know, that's where my stamping tool has been on, on, on these. So I'm just going to kind of go like that so that it doesn't turn into a big square on my paper. Now, uh, let's see, i got a baby wipe. And I was having so much fun with this the other day. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to go in and first of all, I am just going to lay some color down like that. And it looks kind of like a hot mess, but that's okay. Um, because when you're all done with it, you end up with this cool, cool background. So what I want to do before I put on another layer is I'm going to dry it. And I'm just using this little heat tool. I had an, I still have an embossing gun but one of the things I picked up from watching the videos is that this heat tool by Ranger, and I, I'm not selling anything for Ranger, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I just decided to try some of their products. So this has, um, the heat is gentler than, it, it, the fan is not as strong as in an embossing gun. So when you dry this, it's not just gonna push things all over the place. It's just gonna dry it where it is. And that's kind of what I want. I just want to dry it where it is. Then you can take a paper towel and, and mop up some of the excess, you know, so that the big drips are sort of taken care of. Now, I can, I can layer on some more colors if I want to. So I can just spritz again with a little bit of water and make those uh, drops. And now because this is dry, it will make a layer on top of whatever I've already done. So I'm trying to do this so you can kind of see what I'm doing. There, see, can you see that? Can you see the drops on top? So because it's opaque, it will sit right on top. I'm going to dry that again. If you have not had an opportunity to watch one of Tim Holtz's Saturday Live demos, they usually run about two hours. And I can't always um, pop in to watch the live one. 
um, but they always have a replay and so I can watch it you know over a few days time if I don't have time to sit down for a couple hours I mean who has time for that right but they're so informative and he explained everything and um, so he he's really interesting interesting to watch he designs all this stuff for Ranger okay so I think what I want to do now is add a little peacock feathers and I'll try to put my inks over here so you can see them and even a little bit of this speckled egg I really like blue and I really like blue with the um, wild honey if any of you have seen the the laces that I've been that I spray in my journals uh, I use a lot of the um, broken china with the wild honey and it makes a really pretty combination okay so I can swipe it through or I can just sort of lay it on there any way I want I'm just adding color this process reminds me uh, almost a finger painting in a way something that I really liked when I was a kid okay can you see here um, where this speckled egg is just drying you know it's right on top of the the, um, the green color that peeled paint and same with the peacock feathers it just sits on top and the interesting thing about the oxides is that when it dries it oxidizes so it gets kind of this little edge around it and looks really pretty and again you can use these in clusters you can make tags out of them or die cuts uh, you can put them out you know make a master board with them um, so so many possibilities okay so each time you dry a layer it sits on top now if I wanted to I could activate the inks again just by spraying water on it and sometimes that's kind of fun to do too if I want to get a little bit more movement now what I'd like to do is add a little bit more wild honey let's see put it down over here and um, some vintage photo I apologize if some of that is off frame but this is the space I have <laughs> to work in so I'm just going to um, give that a little bit of water so inks like this are more I mean they're for more than just inking up the edges of things which is really kind of cool and if you don't really like something you can just sort of mop it up but I I really like all of the layering of the colors on there and you can do as much or as little as you like you're the boss this is your world this is one of those uh, serendipity things that I like to talk about where you just sort of let the serendipity find you and um, serendipity is absolutely my favorite word because it just it just really evokes so many different possibilities and um, really it's very very freeing you know when I um, I think I might have mentioned before in my uh, career before I retired I spent 30 years as a quality engineer and then the last few years as a paralegal and in both jobs I was really beholden to very rigid rules and uh, very controlled environments and things like that and that's fine you know I mean that real there's a place for it and it really fits my personality well to have that but there are I did that for over 30 years so 
now, it, okay, backing up a little bit, when I was a kid, and my, anybody asked me what I wanted to do when I grew up, my answer was always the same. I wanted to be an artist. And of course, back in the 60s and 70s, you know, especially in the 60s when I was first thinking about it and talking about it, and even as a teenager in the 70s, my parents always said, well, you can't make any, artists don't make any money. Well, those were the days before a lot of graphic arts and stuff like that. So I believed them, and I, I never really did anything to pursue it. Okay, now, so this is kind of coming along. Um, how about a little bit of this rusty hinge? This color right I mean, oh, this is egg mahogany, or egg, egg, aged mahogany. So let's put a little bit of that down. And give it kind of a little purple cast. Anyway, very, very organic, very freeing. And now I think I'll introduce a little bit of spray stain. The, uh, the spray stain now is like the ink and it's translucent. So it's gonna, the tr color might be a little bit more vivid. I'm gonna try not to make a mess. Oh, it's, okay, I gotta fix the. Okay, this is one of those things where, let me put it over here so you can see it. If your tube is bending away from the nozzle, it's gonna be um, hard to get any spray out. So I'm gonna take this and switch it. Now if they're pointing in the same direction, then it'll work better. Okay. Oh, I love that. Um, so much fun. Now, for just for grins, let's put on a little bit of, ooh, how about this picked raspberry? This is kind of a fun color. But first I'm gonna dry it. Uh, let's see. I love that blue. That is broken china. And it's so vivid and pretty. You can you can tilt it so you get drips if you want. Just dry it and just let it just let it be what it wants to be and do what it wants to do. In your mind, you might be thinking, "What a hot mess!" And that was kind of what I was thinking too, until you start building on it. I mean, how cute is that, right? Am I holding it up right? You know, you put that little girl on there and some other things. And that hot mess just became this beautiful backdrop. I also learned, and it seems like common sense, but it just never really occurred to me before then if you hold the paper up then the heat goes through it and so then and it and then it kind of bounces off the glass a little bit too so it dries a little bit quicker one thing i like about this paint gun is that it doesn't make me feel like i need to wear earplugs in fact i love this heat tool i'll put a link in the description on where you can get it for some reason what i have seen on the internet was that most of the ones are the, what they call the UK version, so you would need an adapter for it to work with your outlet if you're in the States. Um, but we did manage to find one that was the USA version, and I was very happy. Okay, now, how about some of this picked raspberry uh, spray stain? Ah, okay, that's too much. <laughs> You don't always know how it's gonna be. And if you don't like it, well, remember what I said? Mop it up, and that's okay. You can just kind of sit there in the background. Okay. But that does add a little drama, doesn't it? 
Okay, now, how about, um, let's see. Do we need a little bit of, let's try the Distress Picked Raspberry instead of the spray. Let's put it on the mat. Okay, I need to clean off my mat. One thing Tim Holtz was talking about with the mat is that, um, and you can use it like a silicone mat also. It doesn't have to be this, but I just happen to really love this. Um, but if you go, if when you're cleaning, if you go up and then off, then you won't get the curly uppies on the edges. I don't know if you know this, mo most of you probably do, but when you pull it back, you've got this palette here too. But I kind of like working on this for right now. Okay, picked raspberry. Um, and then maybe some, how about this fire brick? Okay. Spray, spray, spray. Move it around a little bit. And then just tap it on. See? Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love that. Uh, let's see a little bit of this. And you can just sort of barely see the little speckles. That's okay. A little bit more over there. Can you see how it's just sitting on top and just layering and layering and layering? That is one of the most fun things about this process that I have found. When you were a kid, did you ever um, take a piece of paper um, and color it in just the brightest colors and, and just scribble on the paint, I mean the, the crayon? You didn't even have to take any kind of a shape. You just scribble it on, kind of heavy, and then you cover the whole thing with black crayon. Then you take your fingernail or, you know, a popsicle stick or something like that, and then you draw through um, the black crayon to reveal the color underneath and all the different layers. And that's kind of what this process sort of reminds me of. All the different layers. Okay, I'm thinking I need some vintage photo. Spray, spray. Put a little more down. Well, actually, let's just spray it and see what happens. it on set it on and then what I like to do when I've got enough color on to my satisfaction then I just go around with my ink dauber and fill in the blanks you can see how the oxides when they oxidize they get really creamy so I am going to put on a little bit more of the peacock feathers and um, some walnut stain, or vintage photo rather, spray stain. So I'm gonna put on some spray stain um, over here by my waste basket so I don't make too big of a mess. Giving it a little bit of drama. Okay, little peacock feathers. Oh. 
Okay, I'll dry this off and then I'm going to fill in the rest with uh, my ink daubers. Inky fingers are so much fun. Okay, now I am going to distress this with some vintage photo oxide and just kind of fill in the lighter spaces. All right, so this is one background done. And there are a lot of colors on here, but we'll, we'll play with them after and uh, see what we can do with it. But I think what I want to do is um, turn this into like a tag or something. But before I do that, I want to give it a little bit more of pizzazz. So let's get this guy nailed down. Yep. He's coming to life. There we go. <laughs> Isn't it gorgeous? Right here. But I want a different color. So let's give this one fire brick. Okay, so I think you get the idea that once you have your background on here, then you can start stamping and, and having more fun with it. Um, maybe we'll put that number right there. And... It needs a brighter color, so I'm going to go with um, the wild honey because I think that'll stand out. So that's just kind of in the background, um, but now what I would like to do is add some black. And see, you can kind of see the brown underneath. I really like that. Okay, I think I'm going to call this one done. Um, I mean, not that it's done done, but it gives you kind of the idea of some of the things that you can do um, with, your, with your backgrounds. So I might just like put this in a journal and and layer on uh, some decoupage or something like that on top. But be aware that if you do that, you have to use a non-liquid or non-water-based glue because if you put glue on this um, or any kind of water, it will react the inks again. So if you don't want that, you would want to use a different kind of a glue. The other thing that you can do um, to seal it is put on um, rub on some Distress Micro Glaze. Stuff. And then when you um, rub a little bit of this in, it will set it. It perform. I mean, it uh, it gives it a waterproof 
surface. So then you can do anything on top of it that you want. So you just put some on with your finger and then just kind of buff it in. So this area then would be waterproof. So I went ahead and finished this off camera. I basically just took the uh, piece of paper that I was working on, the book page with all the different layers of ink and the, the stamping that, I, that we did on it, and I glued it onto some manila folder and, and uh, cut the top of it to make it look more like a tag. Added some embellishments um, in the top with a bow pin and a dangly, and then inked around the edges. And then on the back, I just glued on a piece of torn ledger paper that I just sort of grunged up with some ink added some embellishments and some stamping. So I hope you enjoy this little project. I really enjoyed doing it. If you did, please uh, like, give me a thumbs up and, and like the video. And hopefully you'll be back to see part two where we work on some canvas together. So we'll try something new there. So thanks everybody. Hope you enjoyed this. Please um, consider subscribing. We'll see you soon. Bye.